Hello everyone, let's break down my trades in uh, EURUSD yesterday. So it was Tuesday, um, you are seeing it here on MT4. Um, there is an execution here based on strength breaking above this eye and I'm going to explain it of course. And this is only to get the expansion in the London range and a little bit of, actually one tick above the London high would be enough for an exit. Um, I got a little bit of a better feel. Um, it was an exit market order. And then this trade right here, in the context in the context of the market maker, buy model on the M5, H1 sponsorship and targeting. Technically, I was targeting previous days high, but as, um, and this is the weekly open, and I was waiting for the market to hit that level, see how we had if we had any feedback to the downside, I would have collapsed immediately. Instead, if we kept rolling higher and higher and higher, I would have said, you know what? previous day size next and I would have collapsed around 3R. Um, not that I care that it was 3R, it could have been 3.2 just like it could have been 2.8 but that's the level I care about. Technical trader not risk to reward trader. Um, then I trailed my stop in here, I'm gonna explain also why and then it started rolling uh, going higher and higher and higher but the trade was very well executed. In terms of drawdown I didn't get any. Nothing on this one and uh, I bought, uh, I had a 0.3 pips spread for euro so I've literally bought down here probably got alpha pip of throw down here and then it popped higher so a total of 3.6 R um, this trade I did not call in the discord this one which is even better because it's a 2 R I did call on the discord so let's bring it down from the weekly daily H1 and M5 weekly chart for euro USD you might be wondering why I'm using Saxo I'm gonna explain that later. So, on the weekly, what do we have? When we zoom out, we've been in a range for a long time and we are finally breaking out of the range. We have this candle pushing lower into a little bit of an imbalance, pushes up, next candle expands higher. And now when the candle is this weeky, meaning that there's a week below and a week above, I always prefer back to the body. And that was my key level of interest. We tap into that and then we find higher prices. Okay, that's cool. Then daily chart, this is what happened. In the weekly preparation video that I record every single week, actually in the weekend, I said, okay, fine guys, I'm bullish this market. I think it's gonna go higher for previous week's high, which is right here. You know what, let me also address it. The line in the sand that makes me change bias is literally if we close inside this imbalance right here. Now I understand that we are in a low lower low condition, there is a break here in here and markets at mitigation level they can spend more time than one is willing to really have the patience for. Um, that's why I don't really like them but you need to be aware of them so that you can build a strong context. We have a Monday full of news releases, um, bad data for the Eurozone and it dropped lower aggressively. Doing what? Hitting the level right there, the weekly bullish order block or head of the AMA, but the head of the AMA would be a little bit higher of course. Um, and then we close in perfectly like that. So now my modus operandi is okay, we respected a daily PDA and a weekly PDA I know that when these levels are hit and respected, odds are that the market is going to be moving quite nicely. So my goal is to get the expansion phase of this candle. Some of you may call it power of three and it's fine. I mean, all candles have power of three when you think about it. So I don't know how good of a concept it can be, but hey, drops lower there, perfect respect. And then we open, we come back a little bit lower, hitting the 50% of this uh, range, which should be sensitive. And it's okay if it was overshooting here because of the news releases. And then it starts going higher. So what I do is mark previous days high and previous days low. Then going into the hourly chart. What I see here is that the market broke lower and this is a key level. It's the weekly open and it was untested. Now we gotta wait for Monday to close and then we can have this level here. As you can see, it's not anchored to anything in here because this value, this pricing is taken by uh, from FXCM. This is data that Tom Dancy collected. 
Um, I've been knowing about this data for the longest time, um, but I've started implementing it recently, which really shows that you can have the information, but if you don't apply it, they are useless. And it has been probably 16, 18 months, and it's very, very, very consistent. So we have this drop lower in here, and then something is happening around this key level. First of all, you can see a little bit of an imbalance here. And what's going on here? I'm marking these two swing points. Why is that? Because there is an SMT between EURUSD and GBPUSD. This failed to go lower as this one went lower, okay? It's the same price point. So this alone doesn't mean much, it just tells me pay attention because something is going on. The market then pops higher and as it was popping higher, notice the reaction at the 2 a.m. candle. I know that 3 a.m. 3 a.m. can expand now and I'm getting in sync as price is rallying higher. With a stop down here. Why? Because I know statistically that the 2 a.m. candle or the 3 a.m. candle will oftentimes, around 60% of the times, create the extreme without context. Okay, without context. So now that I even have context, it's so much better, right? Um, pops right here, comes back higher, attacks this previous high created in the London close, and then it retraces. Um, the bigger and better trade was down here. Now, I do use imbalances. Um, technically, this is the last high pre breakout, uh, the true one. This could be a refinement. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, sometimes it's going to get it and you have a beautiful entry. Some other times you don't get it. Um, I don't execute on the H1 very often on Euro. Probably I do it five times in a year. Um, and I'm quite an active trader. And th then this happens. 50% right there is it spectacularly. So I'm going to be adding that 50% line. And when you go with the OTE mindset if you go and pick from the lowest low in the ISTI uh, not so good in my opinion when it's this wiki you don't want to be referring back to this candle you want to be referring to the candle that started having the displacement which is this one right here and in that case you do see the 62 to 79 percent retracement level um, this area you can refine into the M15 and uh, you're gonna notice that there is no imbalance but the thing is, in reality, there is one. This specific candle here went up to come back in, and then this candle reclaimed it. So in reality, this candle is something that you could technically skip, and you want to be referring back either to this high or to the body. Let's do the high. Because if you completely skip this candle, okay, I have, I have some imagination uh, right now. This is not there. What do you see? You see that this high then got taken out here and then from this point to this point there is an imbalance and when I do that you have the perfect turning point did I execute on that? no because what I execute on on EURUSD 90% of the times is the M5 for this M5 remember I know statistically that this level is high, highly probable and I know that this level is highly probable too so I'm more biased to the upside rather than the downside. Meaning what? Meaning that I'm going to be looking for longs. Then let me add even more here. Sessions. This is the London range. Do you know the statistics that this London range, either to the upside or to the downside, what are the odds of it being taken? I'll tell you, it's a 94 to 95% likelihood. And if I go with just one day back, this high and this low was not taken because high probability remains or ve even very high probability remains simply probability so in this case it didn't do it and there are conditions as of why that didn't happen and to make it very short ADR or ATR was met for the day the market is quote-unquote tired and it doesn't have to do anything else especially in Forex and if anything it wants to reverse I know that this high statistically is taken very very it's, it's probably gonna be taken okay let's just say that let's add some more this low is formed early in the session this high is formed late in the session the extremes formed late in the session are more likely to be taken so I have so many confluences by the way this is an A plus setup in my book okay it's absolutely perfection 
and that's why I could squeeze 3.6R out of it. And I could have even done more, but I mean, I'm not a perfect trader. Let's analyze this area and think about it. An OTE, what it really unlocks is a market maker buy model. So that's why I use mainly these two concepts. It's a retracement back into a area of interest or a point of interest that then is gonna unlock new order flow to come back higher. On the M5, I don't use market structure breaks. I don't use um, change in the delivery state. Um, not because I don't necessarily believe in them, but because it's not what I do. It's simple as that. What I like is um, order flow breach or breaches, which basically means, and this is richly taken from market maker X model theories, is on the left side of the curve for a market maker buy model, we are going to have what? premium PDAs. So this CB here is respected, these three consecutive up close candles respected, this order block respected, um, this imbalance respected and then we hit the key level and then it pushes. How does it push? First of all it's pushing with some level of energy that's always nice to see and this imbalance here is not working anymore. So this level here it has been used once, twice, and now it's being broken. So this is going to be acting now that the delivery state has changed into what? Previous resistance becomes support. On top of that, since we broke nicely and we formed another fair value gap in the form of ABC, then that's perfection to me. That's literally perfection. I executed as this was dropping in here, add the three points of spread, and that's why my fill is right there. And then the market does what? It keeps on going, keeps on going, takes the highly probable level out. My London trade is done based on that because that's literally the strategy that I'm, I'm employing. So it was not a partial. And then the market starts going lower, going lower, going lower. It's creating basically a bull flag. I'm not the biggest fan, but whatever. It goes there, takes the low, and then a news releases at 10, and then it really, really goes. Now, if we did business prior to the release, meaning we're taking the lows and we're filling the imbalance here, then this should just expand. If instead we were up here and then the news release hit, you can expect an accumulation, manipulation lower into the key level just to come back higher. So we have these two conditions. Um, if manipulation has happened before, expect, expect expansion. If market has been consolidating, then maybe you can expect a drop before a rally and the trade is pretty much done here it goes up there and i'm still holding because i want to see previous days i taken because previous days i is oftentimes taken surely from here i'm not going to be betting on the fact that we're going to go for previous days low wouldn't make any sense whatsoever right and then i start trailing my stop here i trail at 560 which is pretty much the weekly open and tested and it takes me out then sure it consolidates and eventually goes there. I was already out of the trade. 3.6R, beautiful. And uh, yeah, could I have held? Sure, but it was not part of the plan. I am an intraday trader. Um, I couldn't have known that previous week's I was going to be taken like that. For all I knew, we could have consolidated in here, take the high and then come back lower and attack this today. And if, it, if that happened, I would have taken the trade. Um, I'm trading the New York session mainly. It's already taken. Nothing I can do there. Bye bye, guys. Hope you enjoy this one and hope you learned something.